I am Richard de Beecham, the 13th Earl of Warwick. This, my humble abode. Hello everybody and welcome to Warwick Castle. This castle is tied to so much history and it was founded by William the Conqueror but the site actually started much earlier with the warrior princess Ethelflaed. Ethelflaed? I think it's Ethelflaed. Some of the history that this castle is tied to either by its custodians or direct involvement include Joan of Arc, the War of the Roses, the Tudor family, and even Hollywood. Victorian society balls were held here. It fell into disrepair during the reigns of King Henry VII and VIII, and it's been restored many times. It wasn't until 1815 that the castle was open to tourists to bring in more money, which is a pretty common story with a lot of historic sites that later became tourist attractions. In 1978, the castle was sold to the Tussauds Group, which later was absorbed by Merlin Entertainment. So. My Merlin Pass works here. Since being purchased by the Tussauds and then Merlin Group, it's undergone continual renovation and restoration. They continue to do research to keep it restored to its former glory, and now it's open for tourists like us to enjoy and revel in the history. Even though we're pass holders, you do need a reservation to visit, and we've got those today. Masks are required in the indoor parts of the attraction, and we'll wear them like when we're in queues and crowded up areas as well. There's the castle. Glorious, but this is just the beginning. Let's go inside and see what awaits us. We're already walking in on a cobblestone floor path. Hard, hard to walk on. Yeah, it is hard to walk on cobblestone. We got our first glimpse walking inside of the castle gates. Quite a few people enjoying the beautiful grounds today, and it looks like you can walk up along the walls too, so we'll definitely do that. Beautiful day for a castle. This is the giant trebuchet, much bigger than any I've ever seen, and normally they fire it, and it looks like it would fling that way. Whew, wow. Hopefully one day we can come back and they'll be firing it, and we can see one of those go whew, across the field. You can tour various indoor parts of the castle, and right now we're queued up to go into the Great Hall. We're going into the Great Hall and state rooms. Thank you. So here we go. The Great Hall. Carved from a single oak tree, felled in the grounds of Kenilworth Castle. So this whole giant wooden piece was carved from one tree. These glorious knights on their steeds watching over the castle. And this is Folk Gravel, the fifth Baron Brook. He inherited the castle in 1677. A man of leisure and pleasure. You can tell from that wig. This is a chapel. Heraldic shields on the ceiling by the arms of Francis Gravel. Look at the beautiful stained glass windows. This one was built in the 1600s. Organ or harmonium. And look up at the top. See the organ. Narwhal tusk. Oh wow. It's a big tusk. These spears. The Blue Boudoir. Daisy, Countess of Warwick, liked to dress as Marie Antoinette and attended several fancy dress balls in the 1890s dressed as her. Look at the ceilings, how ornate. 
Everything is full of rich, beautiful detail. And now into the next room. Oh wow, this is quite a room. Look at this bed. Oh, look at this hearth. Look at that portrait. So this says Queen Anne bedroom. In 1714, Queen Anne died in her bed in Kensington Palace. This bed was in fact Queen Anne's deathbed. Look at the thick tapestries all over the wall. And again, the ornate ceiling. So lush. This talks about the tapestries. To ensure the colors on the threads did not run, urine was added to the dyes. They've been here since the 17th century and are believed to have belonged to Sir Folk Greville. They're made of wool and silk and were made in Delft, the Netherlands in 1604. On to the next room. Wow, that's a lot of portraits. William Seventh Lord Brooke. This room is linked to lines of portraits of people who have a link to the English Civil War. Interesting. How beautiful, wow. Yeah. How about we get a giant portrait of us? <gasps> I would love that. We'll put it in our apartment. Yes, like a medieval style one. I'll stand exactly like that with my hand on my Maybe without the mask though. Look in this mirror. It magnifies the beautiful detail of the ceiling. It was installed in the 1750s by Francis Greville. Oh wow, it really does magnify the beauty of the ceiling. That is a gorgeous ceiling with the flowers and gold trim. This room was famously used for the Powder Ball in 1895, hosted by Francis Greville and his wife Daisy. It contains artifacts collected by Henry Greville during his grand tour in the 19th century. The majority are from France and Italy. Electricity was first introduced in 1894 and would have dazzled the guests who were so accustomed to candlelight. And this is called the Cedar Drawing Room. The Red Drawing Room. It functioned as a small reception room between the two larger rooms on either side. During the 20th century, the Greville family perpetuated rumors that the ghost of Sir Folk haunted the castle, primarily through this portrait. Their plan was to use this story to attract interest in the castle. That one looks haunted too, to be honest. And look at this grand party here in the Red Drawing Room. And this awesome model, Royal Weekend Party 1898. Oh, we're going to a big Victorian party now. So this is the room Daisy used to host lavish parties. Lady Victoria Sackville West and Millicent, 4th Duchess of Sutherland. Get a little sweep of it. Listen to the music and the sound of glasses clattering. Mm -hmm. That cake and that like tea yeah. looks delicious. Oh, I love a cream tea right now. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love a scone. <laughs> a beautiful study. And it says this is Lord Brooke, Winston Churchill and Spencer Cavendish. Oh, that looks so good. Another tea laid out. Look at the portraits on the table. Can you imagine just hanging out in this room? Having a nice tea, a nice discussion. Oh, Daisy Greville is the most infamous Countess of Warwick in the castle's history. She married Francis Greville in 1881, and together they led Warwick Castle into an era of extravagant society parties. Daisy also established a private zoo on the island, containing deer, an ant bear, monkeys, a baby <laughs> elephant, and a resident peacocks. Very extravagant. And plenty of mirrors to see herself in. Daisy became influenced by socialism and began campaigning for women's rights, children's education, and poor law reform. This was not always well received due to her social status and extravagant behavior. And after joining the Labour Party, she earned the nickname the Red Countess. This suave looking guy is Francis Greville. Look at his fancy room. He's just smoking a cigar in his robe. Lady Anne Greville, the Dowager Countess. I like how you can see her in the mirror there. They have very large, lavish beds. Ooh, this is narrow. This is Edward, Prince of Wales, and Lord George Curzon. Look at the grounds. I don't know. That would be so interesting. I can't afford a carriage. 
But you'll look sweet upon the seat of a bicycle built for two. Okay, and now a spiral staircase lined with beautiful windows to get down. It is definitely that song playing, but is it after Daisy? That is so cool. So we just learned a little piece of history. That song, Daisy, Bicycle Built for Two, is inspired by Daisy Gravel. Well, we were right up there. Yeah, we were right up there. We were just looking down from there. It's always funny to learn like little tidbits of history that you didn't expect. Like we did expect a lot of grand and royal history, but didn't expect that song to be tied to this castle. The Conqueror's Fortress. Let's go up a fortress. The higher we get, the cooler the view gets, and we're still going up higher. Going up some more steps, going higher and higher. Oh boy, look how high we're getting. Oh, look at this, a big wide open space up here. This is cool. We're on the other side of the wall now. Now we're up on like a wall thing, getting a really cool view as if we were soldiers up here on the fortification watching over the castle. And now we go back down. We've booked afternoon tea here at the conservatory. And I think this will be my first official English afternoon tea. We've been seated inside the conservatory and it is a nice warm day, but we did get the tea with Prosecco, so that should be coming soon. Our Prosecco has arrived. Yes. Cheers. There are a variety of teas to choose from. English breakfast, Earl Grey, French Earl Grey, chai, morning sunrise, lemongrass, and ginger. Just so many different teas. And I just went for Earl Grey because it says here it's an afternoon tea essential. And I know that I love Earl Grey, but Sam's gonna get the morning sunrise, so that way I'll be able to taste another one as well. But they all sound wonderful. So afternoon tea comprises mm -hmm. a selection of classic sandwiches, including Cucumber, Ooh. Wiltshire ham, mm -hmm. egg mayonnaise, and coronation chicken. This is followed by a handmade fruit scone, clotted cream, and a tip tree strawberry jam. If there's room left, you can enjoy a colorful selection of sweet treats. Well, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. It sounds like we're gonna be dining like royalty. They might even say this is our castle. We saw all those treats inside the castle and we were like, we need some sandwiches. Yeah, some sandwiches and cakes. Oh, cakes. It, it was the fake ones on the tables. That, that sold us. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank you. I changed to the French Earl Grey because it's loose leaf and fancier. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You. It's loose leaf. It smells so fresh and delicious. Yours smells really good too. We got some water too because it's a warm day. Thank you. It's a heavy pot, huh? Not for professional tea drinkers. <laughs> Let's pour our tea. So they told me you do not put milk in Earl Grey. So no milk for this one. Just delicious golden tea. Look at how beautiful it is. Look at that color. Let's have our first sip of tea. I don't know why I did that hand thing. Oh, food's coming. Our tea has arrived. Well, our food has so arrived. You start at the bottom okay. and work up. Oh, I see. So the top are the sweets. That looks absolutely scrumptious. So that's the scone with clotted cream, which I love. And at the bottom are the four little tiny sandwiches. I love little tiny sandwiches. What a feast. Okay, what do we get first? Just start on the outside or? Yeah, whichever. I think I'll start with that. Yours is different. That is cucumber. Ooh, I love cucumber. Okay, we'll start with that. Mmm. This is definitely my cup of tea. <laughs> See, I'm shaking his head. Come on, that was good. What are you going for? Egg mayonnaise. Ooh. I love little sandwiches. I love it. Mmm. <laughs> I went in for the egg and it's so soft and delicious. All of the crusts are cut off, by the way. Very, very nice. Oh, this is absolutely wonderful. It's also cooling off in here. You notice that, Sam? Yeah. A 
it's like a wind is blowing through and it looks like there's a giant cloud over the sun which thank you thank you giant cloud going in for the coronation chicken delicious both Sam and I love scones and clotted cream and it also comes with a little glass jar of jam so we're going in for that the clotted cream mm. and the jam. It says Wilkin and Sons strawberry. Somebody's peeking in to see if there's any any sandwiches left. Oh bye. Let's put on the clotted cream. Mm. Put a lot on you know. I put the whole thing on. Yeah I'm gonna put the whole thing on. I mean what else are you gonna do with it? Can't send it back. Some people call them scones. They do? Th those people are wrong. <laughs> Is that a thing? Yeah. Let's put all the jam on too. Do you use all your jam too? No. It's only a little. Yeah, I'm not a big jam person. Oh, I'm a big jam person. Let's dig in. Mmm. We worked through the sandwiches. We worked through the scones. We've got our sweets left. Sam ate two of his. I haven't even started mine. I am so full that I don't think I can eat them and they look amazing. So I'm gonna ask if we can take them. I don't know if that's uncouth, but I gotta do what I gotta do. But the tea is delicious. I love this tea set. I need a nice tea set at home. And it's been just an absolutely lovely afternoon tea. I love this. I love just three tiers of deliciousness and a beautiful atmosphere and ambiance. Beautiful piano music playing. Feeling like royalty under the palms. They've given us a little box to take our sweets to go because we were too full, but they look amazing. So we'll have those a little bit later. Hello, Royal Peacock. Hello. Hello, Peacock. I think it wants a bite of our leftovers. We're going to try to make the falconry show. I love a good Birds of Prey show. Today, it seemed like the only shows running were archery and the falconry show. Normally, there are more shows. Some things are running, some things aren't running because of the time so we're in. But here is the area for the bird show. You've got to get here early if you want that seating or that shade. We're here right before the show, so we'll be sitting in the grass. Falconer's Quest. I, Thomas de Beecham, 11th Earl of Warwick, welcome you. I will tell you now of the Falconer's Quest. Woo! I wish to stand as your master falconer and see the skies above the castle full of birds of prey. Oh, beautiful. Many of my countrymen believe barn owls bring good fortune. Beware the talons! Here in the northern lands, Bobby saw a most splendid sight. It was the largest bird in the land, a white-tailed sea eagle. A white-tailed sea so eagle. To see. This great hunter will feed on carrion, or they may steal food from other Oh, did you see it dip its feet in the water? All are in danger. Fish, rabbits, even other birds should watch out for the sea eagle. This huge, sturdy bird was a stellar eagle. Those that cast their eyes on this magnificent bird are transfixed by its presence and power. Glorious. Oh. Oh. It's walked at us. Beautiful. Oh, amazing! So popular in sport and hunting. These birds can be protective of their territory and will 
viciously defend their lands from other hawks. Hobbit heard a very strange story. That if there is no room to perch on a tree, they will sit on top of each other up to four <laughs> birds high. Wow! Look at how massive that is. Amazed to know that the Andean condor had a wingspan of over ten feet. I was going to say seven he feet. Ten did not flap its wings to fly. Gosh. This looks like an eagle. The bald eagle. It's a bald eagle. This bird conveyed power and freedom. And It knows. It knows an American is here. Rarely flapping its wings for flight, but soaring. Hobby returned to Warwick and stood before me. He told me of his adventures. I reminded him that he also wished to see the skies above the castle, full once more of birds of prey. Both Hobby and I were rewarded. Now that all the birds of prey are away, the ducks can come back out and enjoy their lake. I am Richard de Beecham, the 13th Earl of Warwick. This is my humble abode. It's absolutely beautiful. We quite like it. It's not bad. Very well preserved. Well, it's cozy. Your servants served us an afternoon tea. As they should. Yes, and they did a wonderful job. Was it acceptable? Very acceptable. Otherwise? Well. We all know. Because they're saying, doesn't punish, it? Punish, punish, yes. <laughs> so you tell me, where have you been thus far today? So we've been through the Great Hall. We saw the beautiful bedrooms and oh, indoor yes. grounds. We walked up on this wall up here. Fantastic. Oh, up the mound. Yes, so up the, the mound. The oldest part of the castle. Right? Oh, yes. yes. That's right. And do you remember who laid the first part of the castle there? William the Conqueror? Well, he laid the first stones, but the first fort ever built a castle was by Ethelfleda or Ethelfleda. That's right, the warrior princess. The warrior princess. Yes. The daughter of King Alfred. What a wonderful. So the very first fort was built on that very mound. And then in 1068, that is when William the Conqueror started to lay stones and actually fortify the castle. And he gets all the credit. He gets a lot more credit than he should, which is why we like to tell everyone. Yes. Why also, we like to know that all these fantastic young princesses wandering around with bows and arrows and swords and things, this. Yes. This is exactly what we need. These are the ones who build forts. Absolutely wonderful. Keep the I Danes love that. at bay. Yes. Important. <laughs> Very important. Don't forget. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for taking time to chat with us. We've Absolutely. had a wonderful time. We'll be back, definitely. Fantastic. Good to hear it. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. This has got nothing to do with that. It's to do with that. Yeah. You wait for that. No. Is that what that was? <laughs> I quite well known for this, I have to admit. I want that on Facebook. <laughs> Will be. Uh, right here. This very famous symbol, no. the root gesture. No. Oi, you two. Yeah. This... This is called the Archer's Salute. The only person in theory who can do this here today is me. They got caught. They'd have these fingers sliced off. So before the battle, they show that they're, 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 they're defiant and they were not scared. They would stand and they would face their enemy. And it would look something like this. I, Mr. We're not going anywhere! And they'd offer their bow fingers up. Here they are. Come and get them if you want them. Here they are. And that's become abbreviated to those two fingers like so. Now, the truth is, that's nonsense. Ah! Oh yes! <laughs> nonsense! YouTube land! Nonsense. You heard it here first. <laughs> Don't care. I like it. <laughs> I'm keeping it. <laughs> we'll keep so, it. On the count of three, big cheer, fingers high. Hi, guys! You 
right. You having a good day? You know what that means now, look at that. <laughs> no, stay there! <laughs> We've got a message! <laughs> You're going to love this! <laughs> Don't let me down. <laughs> we got you. Don't let me down. <laughs> Give them a wave, say hi! Hi! hi. Let's try that again. They're all up there. After three, one, two, three. Hi! hi. After three, change it to a boo, you know what to do. Don't let me down. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, you bad people. Yeah. I'm sorry. They're from Birmingham. <laughs> I was building it up. Last one. There is so much to do here at Warwick Castle. We could spend several days here doing all of the activities, but we're Merlin Pass holders, so we'll be back. For now, we're going to wrap up our day. Our bellies are full of scones and tea. We got to see some of the beautiful interior and exterior of this wonderful medieval castle. And another day in England, another beautiful castle. By the time this video comes out, I may already be back in Florida, and I may have already been back in Florida for like a week because I'm leaving soon in a few days and I'll be spacing these videos out basically because I don't have a ton of time to edit because we're doing things pretty much every day and then on top of that I don't really have great internet out here okay peacock okay I hear you we're wrapping up so I'm uploading as best I can but it does take several hours to upload the videos on data or hotel Wi-Fi so by the time this comes out like I said I may have already been in Florida for a week or maybe even more when i get back home i'll probably chill for like a week or so and then we'll be back to the florida adventures so thank you guys so much as always for joining me this was an absolutely lovely day and i will see you for the next video and as always stay regal peace out and stay enthused <laughs>